Hello and welcome to Match Fishing TV. Um, it's a historic episode because it's going to be the last for a while of this current format. But to discuss what's been going on in the match world, I'm joined in the studio by Tom Scully. Hello. And Joe Carras. Good evening. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll tell you what's going on at the end of the show, but for the time being, let's get straight to the action of the Shrewsbury Open. Yeah, incredible turn of events, this really, because obviously Shrewsbury been fishing ever so well, hasn't it, all winter, but then it had a little bit of a dip when it got really cold. It got very cold and Re the fish went very yeah, tight. Yeah, 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 but I was out with Hadrian Whittle last week and he said to me, he says, look, I'm going to Shrewsbury on Saturday. I've told everyone to go because it's going to be warm. You know, he made an announcement last week, get yourselves there. Um, and he said to me, I really fancy, think I can catch £70. And he was true to his word, he caught £70, six ounce, a new Shrewsbury match record. But it's not £70 a chub or £70 a barbel. £70 a dace. I mean, that is some ridiculous <laughs> Over going, 400 yeah. fish. Um, just incredible uh, catch of fish. I mean, weights like I've been heard of on the Y, haven't they? But I yeah. think they tend to be bigger fish. And Hadrian actually said to me, there's a lot, them big weights when they've caught £100 a dace in the past, have actually been a lot of chub as well. But yeah. people sort of gloss over that. But he says this was out and out dace. Is on, it a max record, Joe? Are you sure? On the what the uh, at Shrewsbury? Yeah, apparently it's Shrewsbury. Is, is it? Because yeah. right. if you remember, he broke it at, before Christmas, didn't he? It was sixty odd pounds, sixty five right. pounds. So I, I thought there was somebody said there was ninety pound of bream from before, right. but I don't know. I could no. be wrong. Apparently Might that be record. seventy pound is the record. So. That's it then. It's uh, just amazing. Performance. And um, and they hung around a bit as well. Yeah, well apparently there was a smaller match the next day. And Ian Courtney actually. Oh, this was a proper knockup, though, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, this, this was a knockup yeah, where all the competitors went in one car. <laughs> it was only four or five guys fishing, <laughs> but Ian Courtney had seventy pound fourteen ounces, which just beats Hadrian's weight, which is yeah, amazing. It's it's awesome fishing. <laughs> yeah, isn't that? absolutely amazing fishing. I mean, Adrian caught. I think they're both caught on the whip. You'd have to do, wouldn't you, to catch weights like that? But I, know, I spoke to Hayley on Saturday night, and he's just fishing a whip shallow, four or five meters three foot deep, these feeding maggots. And he says it was the most technically challenging day's fishing he's ever had. So it was unbelievably tricky and uh, intricate. Well, that match on Sunday, I mean, it wasn't only Ian that caught a big weight, was it? I mean, Ian Ward's had 64 pounds. <laughs> Ed Warren's had 63 and a half pounds. I mean, this is just lunacy, it's really. It is, isn't it? it but is. we, we, one of the things I think we've got to talk about, because someone's going to talk about it, is how many anglers does it take to constitute a match that you can break a match record mm. on? Mm. You know, I mean, it's, to, to my way of thinking, you've got to be looking at at least a section 10 or 12 or something like that to, to take it really seriously. I mean, no, no taking away from what they've caught mm. and how they've caught them, but is a four or five pegger a match record? You know, it's hell of a performance, but... Yeah, I think it's such a tricky line to go down anyway, because it just takes me back to the debate we had last year about Aaron's Lake. Remember that place down yeah, south yeah. where yeah. they were deliberately trying to break the match record? Now, yeah. fair enough, but when you're catching 900 pounds, over 1,000 pounds of carp, running. you know, it, it comes down... The seagulls to, following the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know everybody would like it on the CV, wouldn't we, the same, oh, the, I'm the UK match record holder, but... We all know, when it gets to that kind of level, it's not really match fishing as we know it. It does become a time and motion exercise, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but I mean, the skill of people like Adrian can't be taken away and, and Ian. You know. The scary thing was, I thought, Joe, from that, that you said to me, he actually felt he could have caught more, didn't he say? If he yeah, could have caught. He, could, he, he says there was, you know, there's more to be had, definitely. Scary. I mean, just going quickly back to the debate about what constitutes a record, it would be very interesting if you got to the final of the old Dread and Knockout Cup, when there were just two blokes in mm -hmm. the final, and one of them broke a match record. Yeah. How this down there, having qualified through X number of rounds to get there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a debate that will run and run. Okay, um, Census Canal Masters. Yeah, I had a chat with Geoff Woodgett this morning. Um, he was a little bit disappointed about the turnout on this, but that were down to a few issues uh, getting bait from what he, what he said to me. And it's probably the lowest one that they've had on this series because it's been absolutely brilliant the last couple of years normally sort of 50 plus peg matches this is the Loughborough Canal yes the Loughborough Canal there's a lot yeah. going on elsewhere at the minute though, yeah the Winter League final, there's an awful yeah. lot of his what would be regulars yeah. would be over on the fence and, yeah. uh, exactly yeah. yeah there's that as well and um, you know but to be fair to Joff he went through all the aggro of, of running it and the disappointment and he was rewarded bless him with a match win which he thoroughly deserved he caught £6.12 uh, he drew peg 100 at the Albion which he said was a a decent area when there's a bit of colour in the canal, which there was, yeah. and he expected a few skimmers to feed. Um, he caught on two lines, he fed one with Lake, um, Census Lake, a little bit of bloodworm, some chopworm in that, and he fed another more sort of conventionally, you might say, with Lehman Joker, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. 
and uh, he's caught over his more positive line mainly, he's caught some big roach and some skimmers. Um, but a nice canal match, 6-12, Joff won it, Steve Hurst was second with 6-6, six, six, and Phil Baker third with 6-4 and a half. And he's told me to tell you that there is a qualifier next Sunday and you can book on by the Census UK Facebook page or by getting in touch with Joff. Well done Joff, good performance. Nice. OK, and uh, just to conclude the first half of this week's show, the Partridge Winter League. Yeah, we've been following this one closely and as with a lot of the commercials this week, they seem to have really picked up, don't they, this week? It did, well, it did go mild, It's been spring it? like, hasn't it, so. this weekend? So, uh, but the winner on the day was James Howarth, great young angler. Uh, he's had £70 three ounce off Spay Peg 2. Now, interestingly, he's caught Dobbin, as it seems to be the case, and then Maggots later on down the track. But he actually had to go and answer the call of nature for 20 minutes mid-match, so he's been uh, good there. I need to cling on to the win. <laughs> so no <to> point intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he, caught, he won the match, and then Stuart Milne was second with £66 on Covey 6. He should have locked him in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the way to do it, wouldn't it? And then third was Chris Weed as senior with £66 dead. So nice tight frame there at Partridge, and uh, looks like the fish are waking up there. Absolutely. Oh, and this, this whole week's forecast to be really nice weather, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah, and they've been going into the weekend. Now, I saw it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm fully expecting what normally happens. It's beautiful in the week, then minus four on Friday night. Lovely. But actually, this weekend, for this Winter League final, which we're going to talk about after the break, it looks like it's going to be a really good, a good forecast. So. Yeah, we'll need two nets, even on the 40-foot, even on the 20-foot, they'll we'll need two nets. You will do if you're Darren Frost. Darren Frost, yeah. We'll come on to that. Yeah, we'll come on to that. <laughs> we'll on the show. OK, we're going to take a, a short break, and we'll be back to you in a couple of minutes. After a bit, once it's all the way through that elastic, it should, but it's not doing so. Let's take it again. <laughs> it's dangling, it's like a swing tip, man. And put it in water actually. It's not really working. Definitely put a there. <laughs> Whoa, we're lucky with that one. Snarling common. Couldn't pin the shot of five months. Getting on for a pound that, isn't it? Lovely. Welcome back. Okay, so big weekend coming up, Winter League final. Um, obviously split over two venues, Decoy and the Fenland Drains. Um, yes, I've got to start by making a little bit of an apology. A big apology? Mm, yeah, a big apology. To uh, Robbie Taylor, bless him. I <laughs> said on last week's show that he caught his winning net of decoy carp on bomb and bread. Which would be a fair assumption. Well... Yeah, and to be honest, Joe, yeah. let's face it, these last few months on commercials, we've generally had Dobbin bread, bomb and bread, bomb and corn, and maggots. That's really been all I've had to go yeah, for. Yeah. So it, I had got uh, bread on the brain a little bit, but he didn't. Uh, he caught on bomb and corn. And bomb we, and know, bread, we know that he didn't because bread's bad. Bread's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but what made me laugh about this? <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Robbie got him some stick, I think. But his friends, who needs friends like Steve Ringer when, when they're putting on Facebook? Obviously, it's all coming to light. I've said, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve Ringer put on. He told me that it was like they'd never seen bread before. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm sorry, Robbie, all my fault. And, um. and it definitely wasn't bread. <laughs> OK, so two opens this weekend. Yes, um, I had a good chat with Andy Goldart a bit earlier. He actually won the match there uh, yesterday. Oh, what a shock. £154, love the day's fishing. He caught on pellets on the long pole. Um, just to give you some idea of what it's like, <laughs> uh, how unpredictable these, these strip lakes are at decoy. Um, Obviously, Andy won the match yesterday. The day before, he actually won his section, but with just seven pound. The rest of his section didn't weigh in, and the match winner was three pegs away from him. Rich Knowles uh, from Shakespeare Super Teen. He, he won at 160 pounds on Saturday. <laughs> so, you know, you've got strip lakes, you've got balls of fish that are really shoaled up. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's going to make it a really, really exciting final. They might spread out a little bit with this mild weather, but they're not going to spread out no. completely, are they? No. The, the, the decoy element of it is going to make this quite a Peggy Winter League final, I think. I think the drains will as well, though, Rod. You know, even looking at sort of... You know, sound ever so Peggy, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I think it could really be won by anybody in this. And even the winning team can probably expect two or three blowouts. Yeah. You know? And with, it, with the type of venues that they are, I don't think you can go and... And to the draw bag and say we've got a good team draw. No. I don't think you'll know what a good team draw is until the match is finished. You've all weighed in. That's right. Or not. Definitely. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about decoy first of all. So we know how hard it is. We know that Andy's won the Sunday one hundred and fifty four pound. Um, Rich Knowles won one hundred and sixty. Yeah. How have they been catching them? Those people that have been on them. Not bomb and bread. No, no definitely, definitely not, not bomb and bread. bread. No sandwiches. Eat the sandwiches. <laughs> don't. Um, but no, bomb sounds really good, bomb and corn. Um, obviously, that's what Robbie won on last Keep week. Keep some long pole tactics, isn't there, by the sounds of it? Yeah, Andy caught on, on pellets, as I say. And I think on some of the lakes, some of the more F1-dominated lakes, there's a lot of fish on maggots as well. Mm. Um, I know that's how John Winkup often likes to fish on there, because he, he gets among some silvers early, some roach, some skimmers, etc. And then later on, when the F1's moving, he catches them as well, like, you know. I, th I think the truth of the matter is, you're going to know within 10 minutes whether you're on yeah, for a big wave. Well, you probably um, know by the start, to be fair, because you'll probably bump into them. Yeah. And, and if that's not happening, yeah. then really you've got to set your target to get a bite. Yeah, it was interesting. I looked at Graham West's net of fish yesterday, and he's, he said he just went to go and have a day's fishing because he knew he wasn't on a ball of carp. And he's had a right net of fish, 26 pounds of little odds and ends. And you think, well, th obviously that's not going to be everywhere, but. No, but from a team, bites from a team perspective, yeah. It's, yeah. although we, we know it's going to be Peggy, and we know that the winner can be sat there 100 pound of fish, and yeah. you can be next to him and, and struggle, but from a team perspective, on points, it's um, well. It's those lads who aren't on the balls of carp will win you the match, aren't they? You know, yeah, if they can do, team. if they can do well, then then you know you do a great job with your team, won't you? Okay, so um, that's been a good turn, obviously. And then the drains, they fish well as well. Yeah, first we've got March, and no stranger to who won. Mark Pollard just keeps on doing it, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. He had seventeen pound eleven, but other than you know, normally it's a bread river, isn't it? But he's actually caught on pinkies and squats, which I thought was interesting. Loose feeding and a bit of ground. Classic case of fishing to your strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that was interesting. And Andy Gregor was second with fourteen pound at ten, and Richard Guest was third with twelve pound twelve. So weights well, are you know nice, nice little. Definitely, that. it's interesting. I probably shouldn't. I don't know whether Polly wants me to say this, but I'm going to go for it. Means I'm, I'm used to getting in trouble, and I'm not here next week, so you know I can't get told off. <laughs> <laughs> Polly said he actually started on bread, um, but it wasn't very good. Mm. He said it, it's it's as if it's gone a little bit. They've been hammered Seen on it, yeah. Um, because obviously, so many teams and people have been down practicing. I think you've also got to bear in mind that it was much, much milder. Mm. You know, the, the bread is brilliant on that river when it's c cold, clear yeah. and cold. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking temperatures that were almost late spring like, yes. or very early autumn like. So I'm not surprised that he's, he's gone down a different route to catch well. And I think come this weekend, if the mild weather stays all week, both on the uh, on March, on the 24th, Factory Bank, I think a team's got to be a little bit open-minded. Mm. Definitely. I don't think you can blow a peg, but I think you can get more out of a peg by, you know, maybe feeling your way Definitely. into the match a bit and see what they want. Yeah. It's worth mentioning as well, just for Polly's ego, that um, he won on Saturday as well, didn't he? Yeah. At Rookery Waters. Now, he's in an awesome vein of form there, and uh, he won it this time with £40, caught on, again on pinkies and maggots, so... Uh, yeah, he's a bit good, isn't he? He's a, he's a bit steady, isn't he, old Polly? Great guy. Great angle. He sounded almost bored when I went him to interview him about winning. Yeah, won again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and the, uh, <laughs> the Snyder rumours book that we launched at the back end of last year, to my way of thinking, some of the funniest things in there are the, oh, the, yeah. the photographs of the kids, <laughs> Mark Polly or Texas, <laughs> <laughs> text Tracy a bunch of flowers <laughs> over. I think some postcard from the 1950s. <laughs> no, great. Okay, 20 foot. Now, what a match result this was. Yes, yeah, this was standout. Um, and talking of characters, another great angling character, Darren <laughs> Frost. Um, I rung him up to talk about what's probably the most remarkable net of fish to come off the drains, actually, up to now, uh, this year. He had 60, um, 62 pound of tench, it was. An incredible net of fish. And he said, I don't know what they're all messing about on the 20 foot, fishing <laughs> for rope. <laughs> There's 50 pound of tench in every peg, you know. Um, it's nice when you're on them. Uh, and the fish that he had in that beautiful you know, big fish. We've got a we've got a picture that we've got we can put picture. up on the 
on the screen, aren't they? I mean, they are some stonking tench. Up to sort of seven pounds, so a big six pound anyway, you know, 12 fish in total. Beautiful um, fish. What yeah, was nice though, it wasn't in that bit where all the roach are, wasn't it? No, so no. It just shows that there could be a few spanners in the works. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, there will be. You reckon they were three quarters of a mile away from that? He said, you know the two, obviously the two bridges where it's been the mm. epicentre for the roach? So he said, so the next bridge upstream of that where he was. Well, um, there's no room for the tench where all the roach yeah. are. <laughs> Evicted. It's worth saying though that that bit was brilliant again, wasn't it? Where the roach and yeah. rudder, yeah. you know, a lot of 20 pound weights again. I think 14 pounders again was last in that section, so. Definitely. Um, but Darren was always very open. He said he caught um, feeding chopworm and castor in balls of soil. He mm -hmm. said it was much better to feed, he felt, in, in soil than, than bait dropping. He thinks it, bait dropping can spook tench. So he's yeah. sort of topped up with little balls. And he said towards the end, you know, he started off playing it sort of safe and that he'd top a ball on, or put a ball in, go back on his roach for a bit and then go back on it. But in the end, he said he was topping up with a ball and, and the, the tench were coming straight to it. It was going straight back on it. Through a mole, it was a moles and everything. What a day's fishing that is. It's pretty, yeah. That's got to be the net of the fish this year, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Super, yeah. yeah, great day's fishing. Jealous as hell. Yeah. Awesome, well, Darren. Well done, Darren. Go on then, um, cards on the table. Who's going to win it? Put your money where your mouth is. I'm going for a controversial choice. I'm going to say Osset again. Yeah. They've been doing well in practice. Looking good, looking dangerous. I mean, obviously it's going to be Peggy. We know there are going to be some, even some good teams, some teams at the top are going to have a couple of dippers. But OK, so you're going to go with Osset. Well, there's a massive factor that you're not considering here. And I've got to go for Drennan Barnsley, based purely on the fact that I know Frankie Janoncelli is going to draw for us. Oh, yeah. So the other teams might as well not show up to He's not practised, he's been away in Ireland. No, he has been practising. Not this week, but he has been. <laughs> And he's not been drawing very well, so he's saving it up. Right. I'm going to go, I'm going to have a daft outside bet. This is almost as daft as Leicester City staying up. I'm going to say that a local team's going to win it. I think Mark One, because of the Peggy influence, I think Mark One could spring a real shock. This is their chance to shine. You look, you look down the results though, Rog, on both decoy and on the drains, and... I think any any one team in that match could win it yeah. very easily. Fulham, if they avoid a couple of really bad results, they yeah. have a chance. Yeah. It was quite literally... They need to be consistent. I mean, we haven't even mentioned Dorking or Starlet yet. I mean, they don't do bad at fishing. No, Dorking no, do <laughs> I've heard of them before. Yeah. I've heard of them. They don't do bad. Or Shakespeare. No. They're all right and all. Yeah, they're all a bit good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Well, as I uh, intimated at the start of the show, um, Tom's obviously... This is Tom's last episode of Match Fishing TV. Well, certainly last episode is... Uh, in the middle chair, um, might come in and guess one day, but we're going to shelve the project for a while um, while we take stock of who's doing what. And Joe, in his new position as editor of Match Fishing Magazine, going to keep putting good stuff out there on the channel, on YouTube, but it's going to be pretty much all live from the bank, Joe. Yeah, I'm just going to, every time I go out and do a feature, I'm going to get loads of little snippets and loads of little you know, tips pieces, and they're going to go on every Tuesday and every Friday night at seven o'clock, so there'll be that regular content for everyone to look at. So, okay. so never say never, but there's going to be loads to see, and um, we'll see you the next time we sit in these chairs. Thanks for watching.